I know, there we go, now we've got audio. All right, as I said before to a dead mic, uh, hello everyone, <laughs> this is Hedgy, and yes, this is not my usual day or usual time. Uh, unfortunately, I was ill yesterday and uh, a bit ill still this morning. Um, but I'm doing better now, so I want to start my week of Chinese food streams leading up for my birthday. My birthday is this coming weekend, and I feel like Chinese food. So I'm going to be making... Oh, well, I've thrown this one in to replace the Saturday stream. And I'm going to still carry on with Tuesday. And then I'm going to throw in another stream probably come Thursday um, where I will probably be making uh, egg rolls. So Tuesday we'll be making uh, uh, almond fried chicken and I will be making uh, egg fried rice to go with that. And then I'll be making chicken egg rolls on Thursday, as I said. And uh, Saturday, I haven't made up my mind yet what I'm going to make. I may be making uh, orange chicken or something like that, or possibly... Well, I haven't decided yet. There's so many options for Chinese food. Um, these recipes are not what you would call authentic Chinese. These are Americanized Chinese. Hey, Tina Bug, welcome in. Um, glad to see you join us today. I am going to be having a shorter stream than normal. I'm going to be making egg flour soup, which is a classic starter in most Chinese restaurants, along with wonton soup or um, hot and sour. Uh, I like egg flour, so that's what I decided to make, and it sounded good, so hey, there we go. Um, as I said, these are Americanized Chinese recipes, and they haven't been passed down in my family yet, but they are passed down from someone's family. I got them from a man whose grandfather owned a Chinese restaurant when he was growing up and it was all Americanized Chinese food at the time and since then this is a family business and it's passed on down to them and they're making more authentic Chinese food however people keep asking them for the old style takeout and that would be his grandfather's recipes things like my Americanized uh, chicken chow mein which I've talked about the beef chow yuck that I made on stream uh, this egg flour soup um, the almond fried chicken and almond gravy which I will be making on Tuesday uh, those are very much Americanized and they're there in most people's memories from you know up until through the 80s and then they started getting more authentic in the Chinese food and the restaurants. Uh, but what you will be seeing is the classic or um, the recipes that uh, our grandparents and parents and my generation, which is in its 50s, would still recognize as being the Chinese food we grew up with. So, I have had a lifelong love affair with Chinese food. I've always loved Chinese food. And I like the food from today where they've actually been uh, doing a good job of, of representing their heritage accurately. Um, but I also like the old style. That's the ones that I crave. The old style chicken chow mein that is primarily made of vegetables. Um, and, you know, it's these days chicken chow mein means uh, 
what you're going to have is uh, noodles with some chicken and some vegetables in it. But it's primarily a noodle dish. And before, it could be served on top of soft noodles, but it was basically all onions and uh, bok choy and lots of celery and other vegetables that got put in there. And um, it was primarily a vegetable dish. I do not like this song. I am going to skip it forward because ick. I can find a way to do that. Boink. There we go. All right. I'm listening to some new uh, music this week. So it's a little experimental. Now I have, uh, I have managed to find a boxed chicken broth that doesn't have garlic in it. It contains water, chicken broth, salt, onion powder, yeast extract, vegetable juice concentrates of carrot, celery, and onion, and turmeric for, for color. Uh, turmeric will turn your food um, yellow. So it, it, it makes for a pretty uh, chicken broth because chicken broth quite naturally only has a slight beige color to it. Now this recipe calls for eight cups of chicken broth. And so I will be putting in 64 ounces of chicken broth, which is coincidentally eight cups. And then I will be bringing that to a simmer on my hot plate I have here from Farberware. We know it, we love it. It's made with uh, solid, cast iron burners so they heat up a little bit slowly but once they get heated they are very very heated and they stay that way and it's a nice even heat so that's good okay so this rather fills my saucepan you would either use a large saucepan like I've got here uh, capable of holding eight cups of broth or you would use a, a small a soup pot or stock pot. I'm going to put that up there now to heat. This is a really simple recipe. It calls for eight cups of uh, chicken broth. It calls for six eggs, lightly whisked. And the idea behind lightly is that what you're going to get when you make the egg flours in your soup is you're going to get some white petals and you're going to get some yellow petals instead of them all being yellow. It really doesn't matter. Um, you can certainly have it so that it's all yellow by beating your eggs much more uh, thoroughly. Um, it's also got a little bit of sugar in it, which I never put in. Uh, it calls for salt and pepper and uh, you can either add additional turmeric to make it the color that you would be used to seeing. Hey, Mrs. Nogatron, how are you? Oh, you're watching the stream from in the car. Well, hey ho, maybe you'll stop and get Chinese on the way home. Um, you can either add turmeric to it if you want to have a more intense yellow color, or you can add three to five drops of yellow food coloring. Personally, uh, it's an appearance thing. It really doesn't do much for flavor with the, with the uh, it doesn't really do much for the flavor to add more turmeric and it definitely doesn't do it to add food coloring. So unless you're doing something like frosting or a dessert, I have a tendency to stay away from food coloring. So it's just added, it's just added chemicals and nobody needs that. In addition, I like to put, let me get my third of a cup out of the way for my purposes. Uh, let's see. Because I will need a third of a cup. I like to add um, 
and the rest and the restaurant that was my favorite always added in um, water chestnuts to their soup because it adds a little bit of crunch to it and um, that's nice to have so you take your water chestnuts and these will be added last uh, right before the garnish and basically what you want to do I have a it is an eight ounce can of sliced water chestnuts and you don't want to add them whole in there you want to um, julienne them or make little matchsticks basically uh, you could dice them if you want but I really recommend you at least try to slice them up um, because nobody wants to really have a big mouthful of water chestnut as delightful as it is uh, it's one of the things that is classically added to most Chinese foods of the day and it, they don't taste like much it's just purely for a nice crispy crunch that doesn't get soggy and doesn't go away <laughs> so uh, you guys out are Mrs. Nog are you guys out uh, Christmas shopping or out visiting relatives already or what is it you guys are doing what are you doing on your Sunday no you did not miss almond chicken that is going to be done on Tuesday um this is in the place of the egg fried rice uh, stream that was on that was supposed to be on Saturday, but I did not feel well, and um, so instead I decided to try and see if I could do a stream today, and I'm doing a short stream. This is an easy recipe to do. You can add it into any kind of Chinese food you're cooking, any kind of stir fry. Uh, it takes literally about 15 minutes once you've reached a simmer in your uh, in your chicken broth because all you're doing is thickening the chicken broth with cornstarch and water and a slurry and you adjust that to how thick you want it to be add more cornstarch and water if you want it to be a thicker consistency of soup add less if you want it to be thinner uh, experience with that will give you um, how much to actually add in but the good news is that cornstarch is very cheap and so you can make up a lot of it and then turn around and add very little if you want um, this is just then thickened and you whisk in some, you stir in some eggs and that forms the flowers as you stir and then you add in these um, water chestnuts and garnish with some green onion slices now a lot of the restaurants these days also add in corn and um, you can also see them add in either little bits of chicken or oddly little tiny like salad shrimp um, not fond of that I like it more classic where it's just got the water chestnuts and some green onion um, it's meant to be a very simple soup it's just a starter but uh, I find it's really nice if your stomach's upset because it is such a simple soup it doesn't have a lot in the way of spices to do anything really um, you're relying on the flavor of the chicken broth itself and the simplicity of the egg now as I've mentioned on Connor the only deaf guys stream where I am a mod uh, when you have a recipe as simple as this there's nowhere to hide you can't hide it with a lot of um, spices or fancy sauces you have to use fresh good quality ingredients so you know use a nice quality chicken bone broth make it yourself um, if you can because that's always going to give you the best flavor 
and uh, take and you know use good quality water chestnuts you can add other vegetables in here if you want to use fresh eggs and make sure that they are fresh before you use them because that's when you're going to get the best flavor from them and you know that kind of goes without saying uh, my chicken broth is only just starting to steam so I'm going to move on to my green onions and this is something that you will want to um, rinse off first and then clean well it is as I said you've got your chicken broth in the pot which really I'm not showing you because well I'm cutting things right now and there's really no reason to uh, show you a pot of just chicken broth at this point and we will need to add in uh, a quarter to a half a teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of white pepper the recipe does call for a quarter teaspoon of sugar but uh, I don't like the taste of that when I add it so I took it out and these are your green onions or your scallions as they're called in different places and you just clean them by pulling off the you rinse them and then you pull off the outer uh, layer of the onion and this recipe only calls for two but I like a little bit more than that I think the spring onion the green onion the scallion as it's variously called has a nice flavor and adds a nice flavor to the soup um, but I'm extremely fond of onions so I am going to add three of them and again I just take the outer leaf and I peel it down to make sure that what we've got is the freshest least bruised area and these have a tendency to bruise very easily so take a look also when you're picking out your onions they can be a little bit floppy because they are after all a long vegetable but you see it's not limp it's it's actually got some rigidity to it and, and you want to do that because that shows to you that it's in good condition and it's fresh I have got these cleaned <laughs> microwave ramen yeah um yeah I I really don't do much to that I I will add extra things to the ramen um, I like adding in vegetables in particular some green onions uh, add in some uh, snow peas I'm particularly fond of and um, you know, maybe add in some chicken a hard-boiled egg you've sliced up and that's really all ramen needs to have added to it so it's another really easy recipe Mr. Nog does not like green onions oh well you can leave them out of his like I said this tends to be something that they use as a garnish on top and not something that's put in it but I like them so I'm going to put it in it along with some of the top green to be the garnish on the top so in this case you want to uh, take and because I'm going to be using the whole thing pretty much not that one it doesn't look really good it's starting to get older um, just cut the top say half inch off get them out of the way and what we'll be doing is just finely slicing the green onion to go in the soup and that will float around on the bottom and uh, be nice little tastes of a mild green onion um, they don't they're not very assertive in flavor 
Um, you find them all over Chinese uh, cooking where they serve them either thin sliced or just the tops or in a lot of cases uh, you'll see them cut into about two inch segments and thrown in with the more stir fried uh, type of recipe including like Kung Pao or um, there's a lot of green onion in things like the Mushu recipes, either Mushu pork or Mushu chicken. And um, that's a bit more complicated. You're not going to be able to go to a regular grocery store and get the ingredients for that because one of the special ingredients in Mushu is actually uh, lily buds. And uh, you'll need to go to a good quality Asian store for that. Uh, in this area, there's some small local shops, but most people go down to Chinatown uh, in Seattle or uh, another location is in Bellevue. And there's a great big, huge Asian store called Uwajamaya's. And they have trained sushi chefs in there serving you fresh sushi. They have all kinds of fresh seafood. You could find octopus there all the time when you can't find it in other fish markets. Uh, they also have absolutely wonderful produce and you can find things like the Japanese eggplant in there. And if you've never had it, you simply must try it. Uh, one of these days I'll show you the recipe for a sauteed sweet chili uh, eggplant that's absolutely lovely. Um, the Japanese eggplant is more shaped like a zucchini. It's long and it's thin and it has a very thin skin to it unlike the regular eggplant that you saw me cook last week in eggplant parmigiana. Um, milder flavor too because of it so um, the skin has uh, a bit of bitterness to it if you're not um, used to it. So I am talking because, like I said, this is a recipe that comes together really quickly as long as you have your chicken broth boiling. And I probably should have started that before stream, um, but I didn't want to cheat y'all out, <laughs> out of some time. So do I have any questions? Is anybody? Hi, Connor. How are you doing? Um, yeah, you'd, you'd find it in a, in a good Korean supermarket. They would probably have it as well. Um, see, the recipes for things like the Chinese and Japanese food, like Korean and Thai food, uh, Vietnamese, all those recipes, they rely on absolutely fresh, high-quality produce and meats. It's their... They're so, they're cooked so quickly and they tend not to hide behind sauces either. And so what you have is the best flavor you get from the fresh produce. And as I get said again, it is absolutely critical that you look over your food all the time that you're going to serve to your family or eat yourself and you know make sure it's not bruised or soft or discolored or slimy or you know it, it needs to be made it needs to be in the condition that you want to have that in your food because when it's in an off condition like that it's also got an off flavor and in some of the best foods you're looking at you're, you're not looking at something you're going to be able to hide behind a lot of seasonings. It's going to be very apparent if you don't use good uh, quality ingredients. And this is my big cup of tea, which I'm having here. And it's about a 32 ounce cup because go big or go home. And just as a little feature, if nobody has looked yet, among the other things that we have that's new, if you go into the emoticons, I have two new little emoticons. I have a figgy pudding, which is there, and I have a little turkey. So there's those, and 
those were made by a lovely man uh, who's a professor. His name is Professor Niels. And you can see him streaming the long dark. And he also likes doing pixel art, so he makes these emoticons and very kindly puts them up on his uh, Discord. And uh, I loved the fact that um, he put up seasonal things, especially the figgy pudding, I think is just adorable. Hi, Richard. Hi. Good in there. How are you tonight? Uh, I know it's very late for both of you. And uh, I am glad to say that for Richard and for Connor, that their two 15 hour uh, shifts they did last week, back to back, that was for their chicken and chips night, in which they had a 24 top table at once. They sold out their entire restaurant. And in addition to that, they also, uh, they also, um, put pork roasts in their rotisserie oven and had a pulled pork night that was the following night and that was an absolute smash hit so you know maybe we can get them to do it again uh, I need to thank three people who followed when I was off stream we have Helga Har from the uh, Long Dark community uh, Cosmo um, and Janino777 all followed me during that time. Thank you very much. And hello, Nina's mom. How are you doing today? Uh, as I said, we are cooking some rather simple food tonight. Um, not feeling especially up to snuff. So I am taking and making egg flour soup which is a very simple soup to make i have got one eight ounce cup of pardon me one eight ounce can of water chestnuts that i have julienned and i have got three green onions which i have sliced very thin as you can see and we've got eight cups of chicken broth now coming to a simmer and it's time to do that cornstarch magic. Um, I need to add in some salt first and some pepper. And I don't have white pepper, which wouldn't show up in the soup. I have black pepper, so we're just going to have to put up with that. And I'm going to move my cutting board out of the way because I'm done with cutting. So I have got the cutting board out of the way and now I am going to scoot in carefully my fiberware uh, hot plate basically. It's a two burner hob and these are uh, they are solid cast iron burners, so they take a while to heat up. Once they get going, they have a lovely, lovely even heat. Now what you want to do here is take, and where's my measuring spoons? There they are. We want to take about an eighth of a teaspoon of pepper. And actually, I'm not going to bother to measure it since I'm using a grinder. I'm going to put some finely ground pepper in here. Not much, just a few twists. And that's probably closer to uh, an eighth of a teaspoon or a sixteenth rather than the quarter that it calls for. But I am feeling a little bit under the weather still, so I'm going to go especially easy on my seasonings and I am adding some ground sea salt here and that's about a quarter teaspoon. Um, the recipe does call for an option for adding in some turmeric or some drops of yellow food coloring which basically do nothing but intensify the yellow color 
and it's not necessary so I figure why add more to it so what you need to do now is stir this up oh and we need to add some oil to this and there I've got some sesame oil and that's strictly for flavor has nothing to do with anything else and then in a nice big container here I am going to take and add six tablespoons of cornstarch so that I can thicken the chicken broth and cornstarch is a funny little ingredient it um, works very well for cooking uh, into your soups and sauces and it thickens it but it gives a nice translucent thickness instead of being a uh, it gives a, a, a nice transparent or translucent um, thickness to it unlike flour which has a tendency to be opaque and um, I know that both of these add flavors but yeah depends on if you don't like the flavor of cornstarch I personally don't really notice that I can taste flour more and then to that we're going to add a third of a cup of water and the funny thing about cornstarch is it settles really quickly and it also poofs all over everywhere so I am going to take that and stir that up really well it liquefies really easily into the water so you want to make sure that you do that it kind of clumps at first and then it will it will liquefy really well but because it settles so quickly you want to make sure that if you mix it up like this see it's nice and uh, liquefied now it's it's all looks kind of like milk um, if you set it aside for a little while before you use it you want to give it another quick stir because the cornstarch does settle uh, very quickly and you don't want to do that because then you'll end up with clumps of uh, cornstarch uh, this is in here strictly for thickening and it will thicken your soup to the degree you would like it to be thickened so add it a little bit at a time if you're unsure how thick and you want to keep stirring while you're doing it because you don't want to have clumps of little uh, cornstarch dumplings in here basically because it does cook quite quickly and it just takes a couple minutes for it to thicken it and I've got some cracked black pepper in the top of this uh, which is why you would add white pepper to it normally That would be my holiday decorations, Richard. Don't be a Grinch. So I'm gonna add the rest of this in here because I do like mine thicker. And stir that up so I don't have swirls of extra thick things. Honey, can I get you to rinse my measuring cup out now? I need it for the eggs. Sorry. So I have got the cornstarch in here and it is deciding to cook itself up with little bits of the starch in there I'm going to turn my heat down now to medium it has been on medium high 
and I need to take and whisk together six eggs to put into this. And yeah, I've got a little bit of cornstarch clouds in there. I didn't stir it quite fast enough. I could get rid of that with the uh, brawn blender, but it really doesn't bother me. So it's more a sight thing. You could also run it through a strainer. Now I am going to take and I have been looking at the chat. I am going to crack my eggs and add them in here. Six fresh large white eggs. Uh, you can use extra large. If you're going to use something like a medium egg, you probably want to add in at least one egg more to make up for the size difference. And yes, size matters. Usually when you're talking about eggs and recipes, they're usually being added for their leavening. So eggs do matter. Yeah, you shouldn't touch that one, no. So that's four eggs. That's five eggs. And this is six eggs. And now, as I said before, you're not looking in this particular recipe to have your eggs well beaten. Because what you're looking to do is make both um, white and uh, yellow egg flowers. So I am just going to beat this up sort of loosely so that you still have yellow and white in here. Although I do want to make sure I have burst all of the egg yolks so that it stays uh, without a giant clump of egg yolk. Now what you want to do is you want to be stirring this and while you're stirring, the speed that you're stirring controls the size of your egg flowers. So if you're stirring faster like this as you drizzle the egg in, it's going to make smaller egg flowers in here. If you slow it down, it makes bigger ones. And ideally, you want to mix the two together. So you will have smaller egg streams and bigger egg streams. And this is an extremely eggy soup. As you can see, you want to always be stirring in a circular direction. And you just keep going until you have all the egg in there. And as the broth is simmering, the egg pretty much cooks instantly. So now we have the basic egg flour soup and you want to turn the heat off on that and take it off the heat because you don't want it to continue to thicken. So at this point, we carefully avoid the extremely hot burner. And now I will add in the uh, julienne water chestnuts because I like more texture to my soup and then carefully mix that up and as you can see we have a lot of really nice egg flowers in there um, this does make about 12 servings in a small cup as a starter if you're going to have this as more of a, a, a soup bowl kind of thing, which is what I'm going to do, um, it's going to serve probably six. So that's pretty much the recipe except for the garnishing and the eating. Uh, that recipe is up in my Discord. And I've got a lovely bowl, bowl here and my ladle and I'm going to take the ladle 
and dish up some soup. And I'm going to stop at about that point. And I will take my green onions and garnish it. I don't like that big piece of black pepper in it. So this is our finished egg flour soup. And it is, I am without a spoon to taste it with. But uh, this is eight cups of chicken broth brought to a simmer. And then you add in a quarter teaspoon of salt, an eighth of a teaspoon of white pepper. Um, you can add in some yellow food coloring if you want it to be brilliantly yellow. Um, you can also add in some turmeric instead, which adds a minor flavor to it, but not much. And then you want to have a half a teaspoon of sesame oil to it. Then you add in your cornstarch slurry of cornstarch and water while it's still simmering. And stir that around until you get the level of thickness you would like. And then you lightly whisk. I don't know if you can see this, but it's got both yellow and white. Uh, flower petals in it. That's what they call the egg flowers in here. And that's why you lightly whisk the eggs. And then I added in julienne. Um, I added in julienne water chestnuts for a little bit of crunch and green onions to make it pretty and add a little bit to the flavor. And that's your classic egg flower soup. That's about as good as it gets. It's a lovely, lovely um, way to start a meal or to have a very light meal with it. Have some fried rice maybe or uh, whatever it is you please. And this makes a really nice light lunch in the summertime. As you can see, it doesn't take long at all. And we will find somebody to raid now if we can. Um, I will be back on Tuesday to make almond fried chicken with almond and chicken gravy. And let's see who we have. I do not see. Why don't we raid? Uh, why don't we raid the Stacy Roy? She is a lovely variety streamer, and she is just a lovely person, and she's terribly sweet. She does cooking, and she also does um, she also does um, Lego assembly, and she's beautiful in about every way you can think of. No, I don't think so. I think we're going to raid the Stacy Roy. So, we will see you guys on Tuesday at 6 p.m. Pacific. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming, and I hope you try the egg flower soup and enjoy it.